Hey guys, and welcome back to the full one on tech. If you watched our last video, which was our review of the JSOX M.2 dock for the Steam Deck, you'll know that we mentioned doing a follow-up on video to show you how to set up your M.2 drive so it auto mounts and you can easily access it in game mode. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's get into it. So first things first, you wanna make sure you have M.2 installed in the dock. We showed you how to do this in the review video, so if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you check that out first. Link will be in the description below. Also make sure your dock is connected to a power source and is plugged into your Steam Deck. To make the process easy as possible, we also recommend attaching and using a keyboard and mouse because you'll need to go into desktop mode and we also recommend connecting to an external display. Once you got that all set up, we're ready to proceed. So the first thing you wanna do is format and partition your M.2 SSD. To do that, we need to head over to desktop mode. And the easiest way to get there is press and hold down the power button on the Steam Deck and then click on switch to desktop mode. Once there, click on the Steam icon at the bottom left corner of the taskbar and type in KDE. You should then see KDE Partition Manager pop up, so go ahead and click on that to launch the application. Now that we have that up, on ours you'll see that we have three things listed. We have the internal M.2 SSD of the Steam Deck, our micro SD card, and finally at the bottom of the list is our M.2 installed in the JSOX dock. And it should have this little USB looking icon next to it since it's an external drive. So we want to click on that and at the top hit new partition table. Once the menu comes up, make sure GPT is selected and then hit create new partition table. Now you'll see in the left pane here, we have a new unallocated partition. So we're going to right click on that and select new. Here we want to drill down on the file system and select NTFS. And we also recommend giving it a label so it's easily recognizable to you later. Then click on OK. At the bottom, you'll now see that we have pending operations. So to actually initiate this, we need to go back up to the top and click on Apply. Then click on Apply Pending Operations to create the new partition. When it's finished, you'll see that it says all operations successively finished. So then you can just click OK and you can close out of the KDE partition manager. Now that we have our drive formatted and partitioned, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're done with the KDE partition management tool. We're going to want to set the password for the deck user. So to do that, we bring up the console terminal, we we'll type passwd, now, you just hit enter at the current password even though you don't have a password set, and then you're going to type in your password, hit enter, retype the password. Now, yours will say password has been set, ours has not been changed because we didn't want to change it. So now we're going to go to the GitHub page for the user scop. Now this link will be in the description below and this is where we're going to want to get the curl command to set up the auto mount. Now he has a video guide on here as well but down in the installation section is where we're going to copy this curl command. So we're going to highlight this curl command and we're going to copy it. close out of the browser, we'll go back to console and we're going to paste in that curl command. Now we have a couple extra characters at the end, at the beginning from the from the copy, so we're going to delete those. So we have tilde at the end here after the bash and we have a couple of characters before the curl. So everything to the left of that, we're going to delete that out. We hit enter. We'll say yes to this prompt that we want the auto mount service. Now it'll ask us for the password we just set. We'll type that in. Hit enter. 
and we'll say yes that we want Z mount. Now Z mount will allow you to mount and unmount. Um, because auto mount mounts everything, it'll be more handy to unmount um, USB drives and SD cards if you want to in game mode. So now that that's done, here we can see that our drive is not mounted yet. You'll see that it says mount and open, so it's not mounted. And we see it's not showing up here in the storage manager. So we're gonna wanna do now is issue a reboot. And now we're back at the desktop. We can see that the external SSD, that's what we named it, is mounted. Now let's move on to Steam. All right, so as Damian mentioned, we're gonna head over to Steam. So to do this, you can just click on the Steam icon on the desktop. Once you get there, click on Steam and go to Settings. And then we want to head to the Downloads. Click on Steam Library folder, and then click on that Add button. You can see our external drive is already populated here. Make sure yours is selected and hit Add. And now you'll see that that drive is now added into Steam. So now we're gonna go ahead and go back to game mode so we can show how the external drive is now populated and auto mounted there. So now we're back in game mode and now we're gonna hit the Steam button and go down to settings and scroll all the way down to storage. And now you can see over here to the right, we have the external SSD. So now that is easily accessed right here in game mode. So if you wanna move your games over, we already have a game here as you can see. You can also hit the X button and make it default. We're just gonna keep our internal drive as default, but just so we can show you how to move over a game, if you wanna do that, we'll do that here. So just go back to the internal drive and we're going to move over Star Wars The Complete Saga. So just click on that and make sure you select your external SSD and then click move. So then it'll start moving over your game to the external SSD. And when it's done, just go ahead and close. And then we'll head back over to the external SSD. And now you can see that that game is now moved over to the external SSD. So it's nice to have access right here in game mode to easily move over your games if you need to. So now we'll just go ahead and launch this game. So you can see it running off the M.2. So just head to your Steam library, click play. And then as you can see, it launches pretty quick here. So there you have it guys. So it's really nice to have this JSOX M.2 drive so you have easy access to quick high speed additional storage to save your games. Also, like we mentioned in our review video, you can put Windows on this and dual boot. So we'll go ahead and show that in another video. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're ready when that video comes out. And that's going to do it for this one, guys. So we'll see you in the next one. Bye.